Hello and welcome to my first video on subscriber questions. So this is where I take time during the week to try to answer a question here and there uh, from subscribers to the channel on any qu any questions that they have related to the content we're covering. In this case, it's NiFi. Now, this question today is, how do I connect to Microsoft SQL Server? And I know sometimes trying to create these connections inside of NiFi can be a pain, trying to figure out what you need, what drivers and all that good stuff. And this one's a pretty simple one since I use it all the time at work. And I already have those answers for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at it, shall we? Okay, so here in NiFi, uh, first thing we want to do is go back to our main flow or whatever flow we're working with that we want to set up the connection for. Go ahead and click on the configuration. From here, we're, you want to navigate to controller services if you're not there. And then go ahead and add a new one. We want a DBCP connection pool. So go ahead and throw that down there. Give your name. My MSSQL server. And then go to properties. So inside of properties, the very first thing we need to do is set the connection URL. So in this case, let's go ahead and open it up. And there's some good things. You notice we can use expression language and parameters. And we'll get to parameters in another video. So from here, you want to grab your connection string. And there we go. So just a couple point or a couple things on the connection string here. So the SQL Server part, you the first part right here where you see my MS SQL Server IP, that will be your DNS name or the actual IP to your server. The port number, if it's not the default port number of one four three three, if you wanted to connect directly to a database to begin with. So in this case, it's just set the master uh, authentication if you need to set it. Encryption, so SSL. In this case, I use SSL to my server, so true. And uh, to set up SSL, here's another flag for it for connecting to my server. So it's trust server certification and true. So that's how I have mine set up for making my connection string. Go ahead and hit OK. Now, driver class name. OK, so in this case, I happen to know what the driver class is for my driver. And this is it right here. How to go find it when I got my driver, I found this as well. So go ahead and hit OK. And if you do have a path or something to your drivers that you store all your f drivers in a certain folder or anything, there you go. So that's what I need to con uh, get a connection. And then your couple other things, you need database user. So my user, and then your pass, whoops, your password. My password. And this is the minimum that you need to get things set up to connect to something. So you have a couple other options down here too. You have max connections. So these are the, just like it says in the description, the maximum amount of active connections that can be allocated from this pool at the same time. So what we're doing here is we're creating a connection that's, it's like a pool, a queue for NiFi for allowing different processors you have out there in NiFi to use this to connect to your other databases or whatnot. And in this case, I only have set to eight. So if I had 10 processors that were all trying to access this database all at the same time, two of them would get queued and have to wait for a connection to become available out of the eight that I'm allowed, that I set it for maximum. And then these are just parameters that specify how long uh, parameters remain or connections remain open when they get evicted and stuff like that. So if you ever, if you know your server can support, if you know the server you're connecting to can support a lot of connections from you, then you can always beef this up if you need to, or you just keep it as is. And then knowing that uh, when two when two processors are fighting for that connection, one of them is going to get queued up why the other one does its job, and then this one will go next. So hit apply. Uh, in this case, I don't have the drivers in that location, so it's not gonna verify, validate it, but 
you would sh you should not get an error and then you would enable it over here. You come back and then you would do uh, execute SQL or whatever you're using to connect to it. And then under properties, under database connection pool service, you should see your connection available now. Go ahead and hit OK, and there you go. Now you can go ahead and utilize it, just like we have in other ones. Now, for Microsoft SQL Server, uh, you are connecting to it using, you want to use the JDBC driver. So here, I'll make sure I put the link to the driver. You can also do a search in Google if you want for Microsoft uh, SQL Server JDBC driver. And you should be able to navigate your way here as well. You can get the zip version or the tar version of it. And then uh, the documentation was over here on the left on more information for the driver and all that good stuff. But yeah, this is where you go to get that driver. Make sure you take the uh, file out of there and drop it in your driver path, direct your directory for where you're accessing from for an to get access to it. And then that's all you have to do. Now you'll be able to use it and navigate to it. So uh, if you have a question or anything, please uh, take some time to subscribe to the channel so you can be notified. And then uh, I'll try to I'll try to prioritize questions from subscribers first. That way I can try to address those quickly or as quickly as I can get to them. And I'll try to get to everyone else's when I have time as well. But uh, hey, please take some time to subscribe and like the video if you liked it. Have a good day.